Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now, today we have a very, very popular cake. It's called a Swiss roll. And despite the name, it doesn't actually originate from Switzerland. Don't know why. The origins of this particular dish are a bit unclear. In different parts of the world, they're called different things. In America, they may be referred to as a, a jelly roll or a jam roll. Uh, there are certain brand names like Yodel. But it's all the, basically the same thing. A sponge cake that's rolled up with stuff in the middle. What you put in the middle is entirely up to you and your own imagination. Today, I'm going to put a little bit of a surprise ingredient, but I'll tell you about that a bit later. Before we get started, just do me a quick favor. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let's get to it. The ingredients for this dish are really very simple. About three eggs, 75 grams of sugar, and 75 grams of self-raising flour. Okay, to make a Swiss roll is surprisingly simple. A little bit technical at points, but surprisingly simple. And what's interesting about this particular cake is that it doesn't include any fat in the actual cake recipe. Most cakes, you cream the sugar and the fat together to begin with, then you add the eggs and your flour, etc. This cake doesn't have any fat in it whatsoever. So that massively reduces the amount of calories. It's still got sugar, can't have everything, um, but it has no fat. So it is a relatively low fat cake. To begin with, all we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're gonna crack our eggs into our sugar, trying to get any shells like I just did just then. One, two, three. Oh, I'm going shell crazy this time. If you do happen to get some shell in, a good tip is to use an eggshell to get our eggshell. So I just added two fails then. See if we can do even better this one. Oh, that's better. There you go. So eggshell to get our eggshell, that's a really good tip. I don't know why it works, but it does. Now all I'm gonna do now is I'm going to whisk these two together for about 10 minutes until they're light, fluffy, and creamy. We're about halfway there, we're starting to get some volume in. The whole point of whisking is to get air into the mixture, to get a really nice, light, fluffy sponge. Because there's no fat to help trap air, we have to do all that with the, uh, with the proteins in the egg. Okay, so here we are. We have the mixture that's light and creamy and quite fluffy. Now, this mixture could never become a meringue. As soon as you add the yolks of an egg, that prevents it from becoming a meringue because any trace of fat stops a meringue happening. If these were just egg whites, you'd have a really big fluffy meringue right now. But what you have instead is a thick, creamy liquid. That's about right. The next stage is virtually as simple as the first one, is I'm going to sift in my flour. I'm sifting it in because that helps get rid of any lumps and keeps it nice and light. So I've sifted in my flour, nice and light. Now, this is an interesting technique. Instead of just mix it all together, blah, 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 what we wanna do is mix it together using a spoon with a cutting action. Why? Because we just spent 10 minutes aerating our mixture, adding lots of air into it, and we don't want to beat all that air out of it. So using cutting motion, just try and cut and mix in our flour. We do need to make sure it's mixed in properly, but we're trying to make sure we mix it in while still trying to maintain all that nice air and bubble activity we just spent 10 minutes creating. And just like that, we're done. You can literally see the bubbles just rising up and bursting, and you can feel how light the mixture is. That's exactly what we're after. It's full of air, and we don't want to lose any of that. So straight away, before it starts to collapse, I'm going to transfer this into a shallow baking tin. Once in, to make it easy for yourself, I'll just tip it to get it to fit the corners. That's one corner, that's another corner, and then do the same thing the opposite way around, into the corner, and then just there. Now I don't want to bang it, because if I bang it, I'm going to start banging out some of the bubbles, but I think that's about right. It's nice and level, 
but it's going to go into the oven for about 10 minutes. It should be golden brown, not dark brown, a nice golden brown and spongy or springy to the touch. And here we are. The sponge is out of the oven and it's nice and soft and lightly golden brown. And it also smells delicious. So now we need to release the cake from the cake tin. To do that, we use a, a table knife and gently run the knife around the outside of the cake tin, slowly releasing the cake from the tin itself. Next, we need to dust a little caster sugar onto some greaseproof paper. This stage can also be done slightly ahead of time. Once we've done that, we need to work quite quickly. Pick up the sponge using the edges touching the greaseproof paper. Be careful because it is hot, it's just out of the oven. Now what we're going to do, we're going to slowly turn the sponge over, top side down, onto the caster sugar, onto the greaseproof paper. Then press it down, smooth it down with your hand. Once you've done that, carefully peel back the greaseproof paper. If the cake starts to tear slightly because it's caught on a piece of paper. Just be very careful, release it, but then carry on slowly peeling it back. Okay, so we've got to work quickly. First thing I'm going to do is tidy up some of the edges. So I'm going to cut off the very edges. Now there's two reasons. One, I'm going to make it pretty, but two, the practical reason, I need to cut off the crust because it won't roll with a crust on it. So I'll cut off the crust. Obviously the crust don't get wasted, because you've got to eat the crust. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. Mm-hmm. Oh, it tastes good. Really nice and light. Okay. Okay, so crust uh, removed. The final step now is to add your filling. Now for this particular filling, I've gone with minced meat, just because I love the taste of milk, minced meat. But you can fill your Swiss roll with whatever you like. So let's get it on. I'm going to get it on and spread it out and across as quickly as I can. Try not to overfill. If you overfill, it's going to make it very difficult to roll it out properly. I'm just going to spread it right out. I've used about two spoonfuls. You can use more or less as you wish. Right, so I've got my, uh, my filling. Next, I've got a roll. So using the paper to help you, you start it off, press down a little bit to get the shape, peel the paper back, and then as tight as you can, just start to roll using the paper to help you. And then with the seam side down, you hold in place for about a minute to set the shape. Okay, after about a minute now, you slowly real peel the paper and we have our swish roll shape. Now, a little bit of it stuck to the greasy paper, but don't worry about that. It's sealed just well. That's for it to plate. And to finish off, all I'm going to do is dust a little bit of icing sugar over the top. There we go. Then let's cut it and see what it looks like on the inside. Oh wow. Look at that. Beautiful. The raisins give a little bit of texture. You got all the spices from the minced meat. It smells fantastic. Let's see what this thing tastes like. So here we have our Swiss roll. But as always, put the puddings in the eating. So let's just, objectively, we can see it's got a really nice shape. It's rolled really well because we rolled the Swiss roll up when it was nice and hot. If you leave it till it goes cool, you're gonna struggle, it's gonna crack. Let's try it with the minced meat. Oh, that works really well. I was, I was in two minds as to whether minced meat would work. That works really well. You got a bit of chew and crunch, a bit of chew from the, from the raisins. You taste the spices coming through from the minced meat. Absolutely delicious. And the sponge is really super light, so it's trapped and kept a lot of the air that we beat into it uh, with a whisk. That works well for me. 
And there we have it. Just like that, a beautiful, soft, spongy Swiss roll. Much easier than you probably thought it would be. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can join us on Facebook and we're also on Instagram to check us out over there. As always, my name is Mr. Lyburn, but you can call me Sir.